Hey YouTube, what's happening? My name is Trevor Celescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies Online. Today I've got a really cool unboxing video for you. This is another model kit on loan from my good friend James. And this of course is the AMT 1977 Ford Cruising Van. But before we begin unboxing this amazing model kit, don't forget to smash that like button if you find these unboxing videos helpful to you. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in this original vintage 1977 Ford van. Once again, we return to our great Ford dealer for 1977 as we check out this amazing cruising van by AMT. One thing that's good about this model kit is, although this is an original loan to us from James, Round 2 has just re-released this recently. As you can see, we got these nice disco groovy stripes up the side, which were really cool for the era. Silver, black, and rainbow here. So again, very cool model kit. As we turn the box up on its side, we can see these awesome swiveling captain chair seats. Followed by this rear three-quarter shot of our van, which features an opening hood, realistic hollow Goodyear tires, and a detailed engine. And along the side of this great cruising van, we get this CB language chart, which tells us what all the different slang terms on the CB radio was, such as feed the bears, which means to pay a ticket. Finally, we have this side view illustration, which says that the kit features are a Ford E150 Econoline 124-inch wheelbase, 351 V8 engine, CB radio and antennas, cruising van custom features, luggage rack, outside spare tire, rainbow stripe decal, porthole windows, and mag style wheels. So now let's remove the lid off our 77 Ford cruising van. And this is the very first time this lid has been off since 1977. So hopefully no ghosts or mice would fly out of it. <laughs> at any rate, here's all our plastic components in a nice bag which we'll take a look at in a minute. And then we've got our clear glass. One thing that was sort of sad about this back in the day is that they never actually put a bag on the clear glass. So of course you're gonna expect a few scratches. There's our chrome looking nice and shiny. And then we've got these two-piece tires again, very popular back in the day, as well as our decal sheet, which we'll take a look at at the end, and our instruction sheet. Are you looking for great model kits, but just don't know where to find them on the internet or wherever? Well, why not check out our great channel at www.monster-hobbies.ca and see what model cars we have for sale for you. I'll leave the link up here, and don't forget that we ship worldwide. So now let's return to our video. The 1975 to 1991 Ford van was actually the third generation of Ford vans. And here in our first panel, we have that engine. I did some research and this turns out to be a 351 Windsor motor. So here we've got our right and left hand side engine block with the standard transmission molded in place. There's our oil pan, our front timing cover, oil filter distributor, belts and pulleys, alternator, fan, right and left hand side intake or sorry, exhaust manifold. There's our cylinder heads, our valve covers, our intake manifold, carburetor, air cleaner, with the air cleaner intake separate, as well as this oil filter pipe up here. They're just showing the extra valve cover on this side. And then we've got an upper radiator hose. Panel two shows our rear suspension going together, and here we have our differential, as well as two leaf springs. We've got a nice full frame going on here, with cross members being glued into place, as well as an exhaust and a fuel tank, shock absorbers, and then we have floor cross members as well, and this all goes down on this nice chassis pan. Panel three and four show our front suspension and the front end assembly, so what we have here is shock absorbers, and then we have all these elements to make up our front suspension, including the crossover front axle, which is really cool, as well as front disc brakes and a tie rod. Now our tie rod gets connected in the panel four with the steering box and column. Then we get this sort of little sub front end that goes on. Our master cylinder and brake booster will all go in, as well as the heater blower, and then our assembled engine will pop up underneath, hooking up to the drive shaft. Panel 5 shows our chassis final assembly, and here we assemble on the rear bumper, our wheels and tires, and as you can see this one has a retainer clip that pops in, so be careful there on how you glue it together. There's our radiator, the cap goes on up underneath because this is upside down, 
windshield washer jar, and a battery. Panel 6 shows our interior going together. There's those captain chairs and you can see how many pieces are needed to assemble them. You got your seat back, your seat front, four armrests for the two different chairs of course. And then we have this base and the swivel mount down below. Here's an air vent which pops into place. Steering wheel, steering column, dashboard and our CB radio. Then we get into panel 7 down here with our body showing our glass going in from behind. And then we've got a nice spare tire mounting bracket here, our spare tire, our rear clear window going into the back of the body, as well as our red taillights. We wrap up our van in the final assemblies here, where of course we have our two portholes which glue onto the side, or you could actually drill a hole so that you can see inside this van. Here we have our roof rack, which is an optional item being dropped on the top as well as our hood going in place, the front grille, front bumper and license plates, and then our two side mirrors and your choice of CV antennas. The location is optional. Here we have the body of our Ford van and what's nice about it is the engine bay having a very long hood in it. Now the Chevy and the Dodge vans of the era had very short hoods and most of the engine was inside, but with the Ford the engine was actually moved forward a bit giving the passengers more room up front. Now we can see this is a nice kit. The, we have the Econo line right here on the sides. Spots for our turn signals to go into. Very nicely done. The back looks correct with the Ford stamped on it. I do believe this body has actually worked. Hey, look at that. Hmm, must be uh, sitting in there for so long, who knows. <laughs> anyway, uh, hopefully we can straighten this out when we put it together. Up front looks good. Lots of nice detailing on the roof here with all of those. And then here we have our door handle and the fuel filler cap, or our gas cap actually. And overall, I mean, this looks really good. It's just too bad it's got that warp in there. The next item we have is our interior floor and chassis pan. Now, as we can see here, AMT decided to put the door panels up the side, but then make nothing along these sides, which I do believe is pretty typical for this van. We do have our gas pedal and brake pedal here, which of course is for an automatic style. Maybe I got the uh, transmission wrong in the instructions, we'll take a look at the plastic. But these are molded into the carpet in place, and then of course we have our center console right there. I would say the detail on here is really nice though. No mold marks on the inside, but I do believe there are some underneath, which of course you have to sand off or get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade. And again, though, it is nice and it is good these are on the bottom and uh, are easy to sand off. Here's a little mechanism part for the opening door. And again, as you can see, there's nice texture in here and overall it looks very, very good. There are some mold issues along here which will have to be sanded out. I think you can see them. They're sort of like little buttons that are standing up here and in the inner wheel arch in the back. Not so bad on this side. Overall though, I think this is very nice and very sweet looking. Our next parts tree includes that amazing 351 Windsor motor. And as you can see, there's our cylinder heads, intake manifold, exhaust manifolds, timing cover, fan, oil pan, battery, uh, valve covers, belts, and the goodies. <laughs> Air cleaner, carburetor. Now this has the automatic transmission. It just uh, tricked me into thinking it was a standard because it's smaller, of course. But yeah, definitely automatic. There's our two CB antennas and our spare tire and mounting bracket as well as our CB radio, good buddy. But as you can see, for the vintage, the detail on here is pretty nice. Very well done, very nicely executed. I like the little top detail on that air cleaner, typical of the Ford for that era. And again, very nicely done. Here we have our parts tree, which contains our frame as well as all the cross braces and our exhaust system and our brake system. So again, we can see just how nicely this is done. There are some sink marks along here, which will have to be filled if you want that perfectly excellent looking frame. But overall, again, mold marks are up where you can't see them, which is nice on this kit. Very good. I always like when they get hidden naturally. But yeah, there it is. And here is our next parts tree, again with a warped piece. And that, of course, is the front engine bay up under our hood, which is pretty sad, actually. But again, the old kits, it's hard to know what their processes were. Here we have our differential in two pieces. There's our rear leaf 
springs, as well as our tie rod and our steering column from inside the van. There's our oil pipe, the steering column that goes through the firewall and everything. There's those front brackets, our disc brakes. Then again, we have our shock absorbers and that crossed wishbone front suspension. There is our heater, the radiator, and then our dashboard and our drive shaft. Now take a good look at that dashboard. That looks exactly how these vans were back in the day. I had a friend that actually had one. They were all pretty cool. Here we have our final whites parts trees for our cruising van. And as you can see, there are a lot of good interior details on here, including our captain's chairs and the armrests, as well as the swivels, our steering wheel, the hood, the retainer clips for these wheel backs, and then our radiator hose. And here we have the luggage rack as well as our fuel cell. Now looking at this parts tree a little closer, you can see the nice upholstery pattern on our captain's chairs there, as well as our nice Ford hood with the big lettering. Now if we turn this over, you can see that on those seat mounts, there are some big mold marks that we are gonna have to get rid of with our sanding papers and hobby blades. But overall, again, this is not a bad looking kit and the parts are pretty decent. Right on, right on. And here we have the sparkling bits, which again are not very much for 1977. Chrome was becoming sort of passe at this time. But here we have the nice grill with the single big headlights in it. A little bit of a black wash will pick that up. There's our custom wheels, again sort of like those Magnum 500s. And then here we have our two bumpers and our side mirrors. So again, not too much for chrome but chrome where it counts. Here we have our clear and transparent parts and as you can see all our glass has a lot of flash on it which is a little bit sad. There's those porthole windows as well as our rear tail lamps. Now just bringing up this glass here to the camera again like I said they didn't have these in a bag back in the day so you can see some scratches that have come up over time. There's a little bit of a mold mark right in the dead center of that glass which is never a fun thing. There's our side windows. If you ever needed to, you could always replace this with some evergreen clear styrene sheet. Just use these as a template to cut out. And then there's our portholes on there, which again would work well if you drilled them into the side of the van before assembling the van body. And then if we take a look at our transparent red parts, you can see that they have that nice detail inside there. Again, a lot of flash around here, so you'll have to clean that up with your hobby blade. Here we have our two-piece Goodyear tires, and again, as you can see, there is quite a bit of flash on here. And the way these tires go together is they have these tabs on them, and you just basically align the two tabs and then push them together, and you have your tire. Now, of course, the tread is not bad on here, but again, these two-piece tires are always problematic, and you really need to glue them together with something like crazy glue, which is sort of out of the norm. So if you ever get one of these and you don't want to use the two-piece tires, just substitute them out with the old Goodyear Polyglass GT tires. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, the decal sheet. And here you can see it is quite simple. We have that nice rainbow graphic going on here with those old Fomoco style dealer plates. And that really is about it. Now this decal sheet is old. And if you wanted to replace it, I do believe round two might have some in their parts box. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great unboxing video as we looked at the AMT 1977 Ford Cruising Van, luckily loaned to us by my good friend James. So thanks again, James, for loaning us this original T481 kit, sort of like the Terminator, <laughs> the T2000 series. Anyway, thanks once again. And if you love these videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more great content. And until next time, everyone, Happy model building.